Hi everyone! In this video, I'll outline the structure and some characteristics of so-called omnibus progressions. How composers use these progressions for modulation and other applications, however, will be the focus of other videos. As I discussed in the video Wedge Progressions, through many eras of music, chord progressions incorporating contrary motion in two parts are relatively common. Often the prolongation of a single harmony may be heard as the basis of these progression types. Derived from the standard descending tetrachord progression, for example, this modified progression, like the standard one, prolongs dominant harmony. Both progressions use voice exchange between the keys 5th and 7th degrees, which in the standard progression involves the lowered and raised 7th part of minor and major dominant harmony, while the modified progression uses only the major dominant. Modified progressions also include an ascending partially chromatic strand moving in contrary motion with the chromatic descent in the bass. Like the bass, the upper strand moves between the keys 1st and 5th degrees, and its inclusion alters some of the original progression's harmony. Despite these alterations, however, the function of each chord remains clear. Here, following the key's dominant 7th chord, for example, a secondary A dominant 7th resolves to the major subdominant, which then moves through a German augmented 6th chord located on A minor's lowered 6th degree to a cadential 6-4 progression in the tonic key. In contrast, the function of some chords in a so-called classic omnibus progression, a five-chord progression, which in this arrangement closely resembles the modified chromatic tetrachord progression, is unclear. Heard following on from the progression's preceding dominant seventh harmony, for example, this chord is likely to be heard either as dominant seventh harmony on A minor's lowered seventh degree, or the dominant seventh of A minor's relative major, C major. It may also be heard as a German augmented 6 chord, an interpretation which is made clearer when the F is notated as E sharp. The German augmented 6 chord may be heard as moving either to a cadential 6-4 progression in the key of B minor, which is initially confirmed with the inclusion of the second inversion B minor triad, or to a passing second inversion minor supertonic chord diatonic to A minor's ascending melodic minor scale. As with the progression's second chord, this chord may also be heard either as an inverted German augmented 6 chord, notated with an F instead of E sharp, which here follows its typical chord of resolution, or as inverted G dominant 7th harmony, which until the progression's final chord is sounded, may indicate resolution to either C major or C minor harmony. In this way, the classic omnibus progression potentially includes several modulations, the possibilities of which may be expanded when the potential for the augmented six chords to be located on other degrees of a key is considered. Like many other tetrachord type progressions, omnibus progressions may be used over either ascending or descending chromatic bass lines. Unlike other types, however, in omnibus progressions around the parts moving in contrary motion, the other parts typically include repeated or sustained notes, which create a pedal-like effect. In a classic omnibus progression, for example, throughout the progression's duration, these repeated notes remain in the same parts. As we'll see, however, in other omnibus progressions, as the progression proceeds, they may move to different parts. Located in the classic omnibus, for example, is the so-called small omnibus, a progression which may be used on its own as a prolongation of dominant harmony, with the framing chords treated as German augmented six chords, or it may be attached to the final chord of the classic omnibus, thereby extending the progression's total number of chords from five to seven. In this application, often the Countess's chromatic ascent is moved to an inner part, with one of the repeated strands now on top. Here, for example, A minor's dominant 7th chord is prolonged by a second inversion G sharp minor harmony, and the repeated part moves to the Countess. Along with attaching small omnibus progressions to the classic progression, entire classic progressions may be joined, creating so-called extended omnibus progressions. To achieve this, one progression's fifth chord is heard as the second chord of the following progression. Only four classic omnibus progressions may be connected in this way before the first progression returns. 
if we hear the second inversion minor chord, the third chord of each progression as the supertonic of a key, four different keys and their relatives are suggested, A minor and a major, F sharp minor and major, E flat minor and major, and C minor and major. The root notes of these keys divide the octave into minor thirds, resulting in only three possible extended omnibus progressions. Their root notes also form a diminished seventh chord. It must be remembered, however, that the second inversion chords may also be heard as belonging to other keys, again suggesting further modulatory possibilities. Within an extended omnibus progression, the repeated notes also collectively form a different diminished seventh chord to the one formed by the implied key's root notes. In this example, G-sharp diminished seventh harmony is formed, which also may be formed by using the root notes of the second inversion minor chords. Some theorists consider the extended omnibus progression to be a modified version of this harmonized chromatic scale, which also appeared in Georg Vogler's Handbook of 1802. The Vogler progression, like the omnibus, may be used both ascending and descending. While the classic omnibus, when used as a five chord progression, may be heard as a prolongation of dominant seventh harmony, Vogler's progression prolongs diminished seventh harmony, which in Vogler's own example prolongs a C-sharp diminished seventh chord. Although Vogler presented the scale over both an ascending and descending chromatic bass, for ease of comparison with the omnibus progression examples, I'll only use the descending section. The different inversions of the diminished seventh harmony frame two other chords. The first is root position dominant 7th harmony, which may be heard also as a German augmented 6th chord, and the second is second inversion minor harmony. Like the extended omnibus progression, Vogler's progression also suggests four keys, each a minor third apart, and can only be transposed three times. The diminished 7th chords formed melodically in both progressions by their repeated notes and harmonically by root notes of certain chords and potential keys may however vary depending on how these various elements are heard. In this way the two progressions are closely related, although Vogler's progression uses here diminished 7th chords instead of the omnibus's dominant 7th. Among other possible alterations to these progressions, composers would freely interchange these two chord types, expanding further the progression's modulatory possibilities. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.